Ladies and gentlemen of the Shrek Gaming Citycom video, let's discuss NVIDIA's Pascal architecture, shall we? Because there have been a couple of confirmations from NVIDIA, the first one being that 16NM FinFET node from TSMC is indeed what they're going to be utilizing for the GPU. The second thing is we have a few specifications of the card. Now, from what we understand, the flagship is going to feature 16 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory 2 BRAM running at a staggering 1 terabyte per second of bandwidth. That is ridiculous. So let's, let's first of all stick with the, um, with the uh, TSMC contract because I think that's quite interesting. But then we will move to the, the memory and other specifications of the GPU that we know so far. So... TSMC, they have won the contract. They were initially battling it out with Samsung, who, in theory, were possibly actually the forerunners for the contract because they were offering 14mm FinFET. But, nope. Um, despite the fact that they have already demonstrated the 14mm with Apple, uh, they were using it for the A9 SOC, just for your FYI. It has now been confirmed that TSMC are the winners, and that means that we're going to most likely see the GPU debuting probably the second quarter of 2016, providing there's no slippage. So, what that also means is that if you're waiting to buy a GPU and you think, ah, bollocks to it, you know, my old GPU is going to handle things for a bit longer, well, it's going to have to handle things for quite a bit longer because you're effectively going to be waiting around 9, 10-ish months, depending. So, what about transistors? What about performance? What about heat? What about all that crap? Well, we're going to be looking at at least around 16 billion transistors, at least that's according to the rumours. This is double that compared to the 8 billion of uh, GM200. So, that's kind of a big deal. Now, 16nm from TSMC will mean that you're going to be able to have up to 65% higher speed, twice the density, or they could go with 70% less power consumption. This is compared to 28nm, just for your FYI. Now, we're going to know a lot more about this stuff in terms of the raw GPU specifications, most likely on the 18th of September, that's this year obviously, because there is going to be a conference in Japan held known as GTC, which is going to be more specifically graphics orientated. What we do know is NVIDIA are using, of course, HBM2. Now that memory is going to be um, stacked in multiple, uh, well, stacks, and uh, it's going to be up to 16 gigabytes for the highest uh for the highest single card uh, model, which is quite a lot. I mean, 16 gigabytes is, is is an awful lot when you compare it to like four gigabytes for the Fury X for just sake of argument. Now, technically they could put up to 32 gigabytes of HPM2 on the GPU, but that's probably too much even for four or even possibly 8K, but who knows? Maybe if they release like a Titan end product, that could be the thing, or maybe Volta. But, you know, for now, with Pascal, it's going to be 16 gigabytes, which is still plentiful. It's bountiful. That's on a 4096-bit memory interface, of course. And it's got four, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, 8 GB uh, per DRAM die. Now, from what we understand, Samsung and SK Hynix are both planning to do mass production later this year, which should, should fix the shortages of the memory chips which have plagued AMD. Um, to give you a point of comparison, the HBM1 of course has a limit up to 4 gigabytes and is only putting out 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. That's still considerably more than the 334 gigabytes of the 980 Ti, but it's absolutely getting pounded into an oblivion by HBM2 which is literally double the speed. Now, we do know that AMD will most likely be sticking with SK Hynix, and that will, of course, be the memory which is going to be featured also on the Arctic Islands, so they will also be using HBM2. What other stuff? Well, it's quite a bit of stuff. 
First of all, NVIDIA are going to be introducing NVLink. Now, NVLink is, well, you could think of it as PCIe, but on steroids. It will offer up to 12 times the bandwidth. At the very minimum, it's going to offer 5 times the bandwidth, but up to 12 times the bandwidth. So, one of the problems we've got right now with the PCIe connections is that they're not really that fast in comparison if you're shifting massive amounts of compute data. It's kind of that simple, right? So what they are planning is that, you know, with this new technology, unified memory is going to be much easier. So effectively, the CPU and GPU are going to be able to much, much more effi efficiently address the same memory. Uh, it, it could be kind of cool, but um, it's still a bit unclear how that's going to work for desktop users, to be totally honest. I guess it's possible NVIDIA could do like the old Enforce boards, and this is my speculation because they've not announced this stuff yet. Um, obviously, they'll probably do this for servers, but it's also possible they could release like the old Enforce boards, which will have a specific uh, connection for their GPUs, but I'm just guessing at that. There is no confirmation whatsoever, so don't take that as a, like a, an announcement. There will also be massive improvements to compute uh, performance. And as you know, Maxwell is a bit weak with compute. Um, so they're going to fix that. So how is this going to compare to Arctic Islands from AMD, which obviously is going to be like their high end of GPU? Well, it's a bit difficult to know. Technically, it will have the same amount of RAM. Technically, the number of transistors should theoretically be around the same ballpark. And they are, just for the point of reference, also using TSMC, at least according to rumours. Will it be faster? I don't know. That simple. But it's going to be a very, very cool time. Um, I think next year is pretty good. So, if you've listened to this video and you think to yourself, Well, shit, what do I do now? My advice to you, uh, this is not necessarily an advicey video but my opinion what are you doing like if your gpu is good enough and you think to yourself eh i can soldier it for like an extra car you know if you're rich then just buy whatever but once again if you're on a smaller budget my advice to you let your gpu do the do what it has to do for now kind of save up wait for next year and then jump on a really high-end system for the sake of argument you could jump on zen or you could jump on Intel's latest and greatest and then you could do that with Nvidia or AMD's flagship the second quarter of next year So basically you've got like what nine ten months to save up and get a ridiculous rig It's a good possibility anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon So for the squeaky chair, but for now I'm gonna get going so take care and have a good evening. Bye for now